Thank you for a uh, flattering introduction. Uh, I am looking for a publicist. And <laughs> if you have any more time in your schedule, your name is just going to top the pile there. So, you know, first of all, I just want to thank you know, Ann's College and everyone here for inviting me to speak here today. Uh, so it's a pleasure to see all these young, bright faces here. and want to congratulate uh, the incoming class of 2015, as well as all the hard work and contributions from the rest of uh, the participants today. Uh, it's good to see some of the parents out here supporting that. Uh, and in many ways, it's good that I don't recognize any of you, because that means two things. Uh, one is my classmates have hopefully graduated and moved on to bigger and brighter things. And also that none of you have been arrested and had to see me for an assessment of any sort. Um, so I think those things bode well for the beginning of a new school year. Uh, and for, perhaps I'll just take this chance to explain a little bit of what I do. Um, I mean, it is psychiatry and psychiatric work I do, so all my patients are have a mental illness. The only difference is that they've also been charged uh, with some criminal behavior at some point uh, in their career. So my job includes assessing these people and diagnosing them, but also partaking in the rehabilitative process to, to face their mental illness to hopefully reintegrate them back in society. Uh, sometimes it's more possible than others and some are more challenging than other patients. Uh, so my patients range from people who our outpatients who come in and see us, to people who are on minimum or medium security units, to people up in penitent and maximum. Uh, some of my patients include sex offenders as well. Uh, and you know, all the sexy stuff that you see on TV, like the media coverage of you know, serial killers and whatnot, that's a very small part of it. But the big part is what me and Fidelma, the very mentally, seriously mentally ill people who have incurred uh, criminal charges, uh, rightfully or wrongfully. So, uh, with that, uh, you know, when Karen approached me a couple of weeks ago to speak, I immediately replied, sure, you know, I'm not doing anything, why not, it seems like it'd be a fun thing. Uh, and then I got to thinking what I would actually say in terms of kind of words of encouragement or inspiration, and I realized that, you know, I was 30 years old, I was still in school, uh, and it's kind of depressing. Um, <laughs> Uh, I can say with confidence I'm an expert student. I've learned to milk the student discount system exceptionally well. Uh, so if you want advice on that, I'm more than happy to give you that. But I thought, you know, maybe what I could talk about was perhaps share uh, an article I recently read, which I thought was kind of articulated in a very nice way of what it means to, to kind of succeed and accomplish your goals in life. And also hopefully maybe to share some experiences I've had that I found useful and I've seen other people find useful as well and hopefully this will maybe passively wash over you and you know everything I know at the end of this. So the article I was reading was actually recently in the New York Times that was ironically titled, at least for today's purposes, um, is the secret to success failure. And what the article talked about was that people who tend to succeed in life weren't necessarily guys who who had the highest marks, who had the highest IQ, or were people who learned to, to deal with setbacks and failures, uh, were people who could kind of postpone gratification in pursuit of a goal, uh, pursuit of dreams, uh, and also people who had characteristics such as, you know, that, a sense of grit, uh, a zest, a curiosity for learning, and to kind of improving yourself and in, in, all, in all aspects of life. And, you know, I thought it was a very elegantly written article, and when I kind of think back to uh, you know the last ten years in school and, and all the hardships I faced, I mean, a few things kind of really came out, and I hope I could share that with you guys today. The first thing being, I think, and maybe the most important, is to find something you're really passionate about, and to follow through with it. Uh, for some people in this room, you may already know what that is. Uh, for other people, you think you know what it is, but that will change. Uh, and for other people, you may have no clue, and that's okay. I think a great part of the undergraduate curriculum is to figure that out, to figure out what you do like, uh, what you don't like, uh, what you're good at, maybe what you're not so strong at, and to improve that. And for me, I never really quite sorted out that out until my second or third year, where I was able to combine my interest of medicine with writing and semiotics, and that's what I ended up pursuing in the last two years, which was actually the most memorable and fun two years of my undergrad. Um, and that this continued on into my medical school, that when it came time to choose what I wanted to specialize in residency, I actually forwent 
choosing a surgical subspecialty for psychiatry because I thought it gave it a good balance of making medical decisions as well as ethical decisions on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's what I find challenging or rewarding in my day-to-day -day job. So something for you guys to sort out over the next couple of years uh, what that is. I don't think there's a rush to do so. The second thing is figuring out for yourself the, the sense of balance between work and play. I mean, people always say, you know, I work hard and I play harder. Um, I'll tell you that doesn't quite work out in real life very well. <laughs> um, but, but at the same time, you know, I definitely when I look back into people in the medical profession, I see like a lot of guys who work way too hard, who kind of bury themselves in their work. And I think as a result, clinically, um, they don't perform as well, they don't do the best for their patients, but also that they eventually burn out. Uh, and I've seen that happen to a lot of my friends over the years, and just people as just friends of friends. So just to keep that in mind, find out what that balance is for you. Uh, and for me, it was always just forcing myself to go out at least once or twice a week, even during exams, whether it was to the gym or just having a coffee for an hour, or, you know, partying all night. Whatever it is, just get away, just for a little bit, just to give yourself that space to rejuvenate and to kind of recover, so you can stay focused and kind of continue on with your studies. And then the third thing is kind of like the, I guess, one of these motherhood statements, you know, like don't forget your friends and family. Um, you know, when I think back to like 10 years of exams and tasks and whatnot, like I don't remember like a single question that was asked. I don't remember a single answer I wrote. I barely remember any marks I got in any of my tests except for the 55 I got in genetics, which I only passed because they belted up from 45. <laughs> you know, but none of that matters. I mean, I think you guys are going to put into hard work and you're going to get what needs to get done, but uh, just to not like neglect your family and your friends in the process. Uh, it's just something to keep in mind. And then, I guess that's my final point, is that you know, as you try to navigate all the kind of physical, emotional, kind of intellectual rigors of academic life, and just like life in general, like it's hard. It's hard work, it's exhausting, at times it can be devastating. And certainly like when things do become overwhelming, I would just say as like a little plug to my profession, is like don't hesitate to use mental health services. Uh, to kind of seek out a professional. Uh, certainly, like in the medical field, the rates of depression and anxiety are way higher than the general population. And so, like I've seen firsthand, like what people who are under a lot of pressure and a lot of stress, and when the stakes are high, what can happen in affect their mental health. So I would just say to remember that, and if you see your friends who are suffering, you don't be afraid to speak up for that as well, because there's help out there, and that people can get better. So. Uh, on that somewhat of a downer note, um, I think perhaps I'll, I'll wrap up and hopefully that you know some of my words were inspiring either in helping you find direction or perhaps you find that it makes no sense, in which case I advise you to do the exact opposite. Um, and I wish the rest of you the very best in uh, your careers. All right.